So welcome and hello um, to all of you. Thank you so much for joining our webinar this afternoon. Um, this features our program spotlight for this month, which is Digital Health and Data Analytics Program. I'm Grace, I'm the Associate Registrar for Enrollment Management and Systems. And with me today is our Associate Head for Academic Affairs and our Admissions Coordinator, who will be sharing some updates on the DHDA program. I'd like first to invite Lori and then Dylan for a short introduction. Over to you, Lori. Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Lori Petrovici, and as Grace said, I'm the Associate Head of Academic Affairs at Michigan. Um, also a Michigan graduate from the respiratory therapy program from many years ago. So um, I'm here just to share a bit of information about the DHDA program. Welcome. Awesome. Thank you, Lori. Dylan. Hello, everyone. I'm Dylan Matson. I'm the admissions coordinator here at Michigan. And I'm happy to answer any of your questions in the chat. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. And so we will first proceed with our land acknowledgement before we go over the topics that we will be covering this afternoon. We acknowledge the sacred land where we are today, which has been and continues to be the traditional territory of the Huron Wenda the Seneca, and the Mississaugas of the Credit River, among many other unnamed and unrecognized indigenous communities. At this location, we stand on land protected by the Dish with One Spoon Treaty between the Anishinaabe, Mississaugas, and the Haudenosaunee that bound them to share the territory and protect the land. We recognize this agreement not as a thing of the past, but as a promise today and into the future. We must share the responsibility of ensuring that the dish is never empty by taking care of the land and the creatures we share with it and transforming our personal and institutional relationships. This meeting place is still home to many indigenous peoples across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work and learn on this land. We urge you as future Canadian healthcare practitioners and leaders to acknowledge that it is our collective responsibility to strengthen our ties within the communities we serve and practice healthcare in a way that advances the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's seven health-related recommendations and practice the profession in that spirit. And so for today, we have like I said, a few things to cover. Um, first thing is that our associate head, Lori, will be discussing some program updates, some exciting um, updates about the DHDA program, and then also some more updates regarding career and further education pathways that this program offers. Um, apart from that, we will also be covering admission requirements, anything you need to know about getting into the program, as well as what are the application steps and how much the tuition and other fees are. And now I'm going to pass it over to Lori to speak about the program updates. Great. Thanks, Grace. All right. If you can just go to the first slide, that's perfect just get my pictures out of the way here. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to provide some updates to this program. Uh, the DHDA program was started in 2021 and ran as an advanced diploma through till 2023, which is the cohort that's in right now. Um, but starting in fall 2024 and moving forward, we've changed this program from a six semester advanced diploma to a four semester graduate certificate. We've also changed its delivery to be more flexible and part-time. Why do we do this? The major reason we did this was to get people the information that they need quite quickly so that they can build on some of their experience and some of their previous education that they're coming to Michener with. So it's, you don't have to spend three years in the program. You're now getting the information that you need very quickly in four semesters. And the way we did that is we omitted the optional practicum that um, existed in the last two semesters of the program. 
we found that most people were already working or they, you know, after they started taking some of the courses because of the industry links, they ended up getting jobs right out of that fourth semester. And so um, that's another reason that we um, changed it to a grad certificate. Next slide, please, Grace. So just um, a little, it just puts it sort of on the paper. As I said, it was six semesters. It's now gone to four semesters. There was an optional practicum um, when it was six semesters. And as I mentioned, we found that most people left after the fourth semester to pursue jobs or um, different positions in their current employment. And so in the new um, program design, starting fall 2024 and onwards, we do no longer have a practicum year associated with the program. Next slide. So this is a picture of what at Michener we call a model route, also known as a program design. And I put this here just so you could see, and you know, some of the examples of the courses that you'll be um, running through. So you'll see that, you know, one of our feature courses is a healthcare ecosystem course which really gives you a good foundation and background into how Canadian healthcare works. And then of course, a couple courses in digital health, we've got artificial intelligence and machine learning. So again, two courses in that, um, you know, we've got design thinking and quality improvement, some professional development specialty topics, and that's really to prepare you to go out to the workforce. How do you network? How do you find those positions? And then the applied project course, which has always been a part of this program, but now we're trying to make linkages with industry so that some of the project ideas that are that our students are coming up with are real life problems that um, we see within the industry. So when you look at this, you'll see, you know, four lectures a week, three lectures a week. As we mentioned before, it is on a part time basis. And so you will see the flexibility and oftentimes there'll be classes in the evening. Classes will occur both synchronously and asynchronously. So synchronously means you all have to be there at the same time. Synchronously means you can listen to the lecture or um, work independently through some exercises. Okay, next slide, please. So the biggest question we get asked is, so what happens after the program? As I mentioned, many people are already working in the industry, but not everybody. So there are some opportunities for further post-secondary education. You may choose to enter a master's of health informatics um, or other master's programs after this. Um, and then we also see some of our graduates working as data analysts within hospitals, within Ontario Health. Sort of that data specialist role is, is what most of the titles are. Next slide, please. And now we're going to turn it over to Dylan on admissions. Um, if you have questions about what I've just done in the program, please feel free to put them in the chat or there'll be an open opportunity at the end for you to ask questions. Awesome. Um, thank you, Lori, for sharing that wonderful um, updates about the program. It seems that the program has really embraced um, fully remote, flexible um format to accommodate the very busy lives of our prospective students for this program so thank you so much Lori and of course um for our students who are currently listening to this webinar please feel free to put in or submit your questions on the chat um Dylan is there to monitor the chat and also we could entertain some questions later at the live Q&A so um in terms of admissions the admission requirements for this program hasn't much changed since its first inception. So the minimum um, education required is still a bachelor's degree. And of course, um, you need to at least have a 2.7 cumulative GPA from your bachelor's degree to be eligible for this program. Note that the cumulative GPA accounts for about 60% of the total admission score. And also note that CASPER is not required for this program. Unlike all other um, base programs from Mitchell that requires CASPER. Um, 
Also for DHDA, you would be required to um, at least demonstrate that you have completed your basic statistics. It's a prerequisite course. Um, just a note that if you're currently fulfilling the basic um, statistics prerequisite course, you need to submit a proof of registration by the February 8th supporting document deadline. And then of course, um, you are also going to be required to submit an applicant experience checklist, which I will be speaking more about in the next slide. So the applicant experience checklist is um, counting for about 40% of your total admission score. What does this mean? It actually solicits any clinical or digital work experience that you may have, and you'll be given extra points for that. Um, for you to be able to support your claim that you have mentioned on your applicant experience checklist, you'll be required to submit your resume. And your resume needs to be structured in such a way that it would list all the relevant experiences in the past or current that you may have that the checklist is asking for. So you have to make sure that they are structured very well and easy for the assessors to find. Um, and so moving along for the application steps, um, of course, you yourself will have to review the admission requirements, which is very much um, important when you're deciding to submit your application for this program or not. Just a note as well that the application deadline for the DHDA program is February 1st, um, 2024, and this is through OCAS. Um, there are associated fees for ap applying to this program, so in total, it's about, um, including the supplemental fees, it's $200. And then another important deadline for this program is that, is that you need to submit your supporting documents by February 8, 2024. So just as I have mentioned, um, if you are in progress, the taking um, the basic prerequisite, uh, basic statistics prerequisite course, you need to make sure that you submit a proof of registration by the February 8th deadline. Apart from that, all your transcripts as well, proof of your graduation um, needs to be included as part of your supporting documents, as well as your applicant experience checklist. And of course, beyond February 8th, um, we will not be providing any updates with respect to the status of your application, whether you qualify or not, um, you'll just have to wait for the admission decision. So the offers of admission, the first round offers will be released somewhere around mid-April, and then we will be providing updates on wait list in early May. And of course, just a short um, information about how our tuition and other fees look like for the current year or the upcoming 2024 academic year. So these are all available on our website. Feel free to check them out. But what you're seeing here is eventually the total fees per year. For example, year one, it's about $11,000, which comprises of the tuition and other mandatory fees. And almost about the same as well, a little, um, lower on your year two, which is 11,100. And that concludes our presentation for today with respect to the program updates and the admission requirements. And we are now more than happy to take any questions in the chat. Maybe Dylan, do you have anything on the Q&A or chat? I don't yet. Uh... I, but it is open, so feel free to ask any questions. Mm -hmm. Lori, do you have anything else to add as well for the program? While we're waiting for, um, you know, the students to submit some Q&A, some uh, questions on the Q&A.
Lori, you're sorry, muted. <laughs> I know, sorry. There was an alarm going off in the building. So I had oh, to mute dear. and I was typing. So <laughs> I didn't want okay. to subject you to the alarm. <laughs> Okay, so we're still waiting for some questions about um, the program, but I'm just going to go back to one of our slides um, earlier. And maybe, you know, if there are questions that you think of after the webinar is over, just send an email to admissions at mitchner.ca and we can certainly provide any detailed answers for you from there. Mm -hmm. Um, I forgot to mention this as well, that if, for example, you don't have any um, related experience that the checklist is looking for, like if you don't have clinical or digital experience, that is all fine. You still need to submit the applicant experience checklist. And as you may see on this sample right here, um, you can just submit the checklist by just making sure that you check on this box, right? Like none of the following checklist items apply to me, it's still required and you need to submit this by February 8th. Okay, let me go over to my panel. I'll give um, you guys another, maybe a minute and then we'll proceed to the following slides. Uh, there is one now. How many people apply okay. to the program and how many people are accepted? Good question. So um, we typically, accept about 30 students per intake. Um, and we normally receive about more than 100 applications per year for DHDA. Thanks, Dylan. That's a good question, by the way. And this program is also very good for um, people, especially who are in let's say has a very strong background in information management, but they're passionate about healthcare and want to see how they can transition, like use their you know, background from information management to transition into like work, working more in a hospital setting or in healthcare. This is a good opportunity to do that. Um, Okay, another 30 seconds. And just like what Lori has mentioned earlier, if you have any other questions that you might not have had thought of um, today, please feel free to contact us through our email um, admissions that Michener or admissions at Michener.ca. And then we're also open for um, in-person visits. And then our telephone lines are also open during Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays. Okay, so I don't think we have any other questions. And we'll proceed to the next few slides. Okay, um, besides what I mentioned earlier, um, that we are now open for in-person visits as well as um, telephone lines are open. We also host an um, hour drop-in session for admission questions. So we, this is your opportunity to consult with us if there's like a specific um, case to you that you want to bring up, like maybe advice on admissions um, and anything else related to admission questions. You can always feel free to um, drop in during our ask me question during Wednesdays from 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. And then we host, a, I mean, a series of upcoming information sessions. So our next program spotlight is on February. And anyone who might also be interested in our newest program, which is Fundamentals of the Healthcare, 
that will be on the 26th of next month. And then afterwards, um, most of the webinars that you'll be seeing here are for students who have been admitted or have successfully uh, received an offer of admission. So on the April, on April or end of April, we'll have post admissions webinar, which is focusing more on how to accept your offer of admission. And then on June, health requirements. And then on July, it will be focusing more on financial aid. And of course, as I've mentioned repeatedly um, this webinar, we would love to hear from you. Um, the best way to communicate with us is through, ad, through email, admissions at michener.ca, and you can call us during those times mentioned here. We're open. Um, we'll be more than happy to assist you with whatever questions that you have. And if you want to drop by and say hi, of course, we are now accepting in-person visits on campus at um, St. Patrick Street. And you also, if you want to follow us on social me media, here are our social media um, links. And that's it. Thank you so much, everyone, for taking the time this afternoon to know more about our updates. Oh, by the way, there's, okay, I will go and answer this question. We're already done, but is the program a good fit for people who do not have? a background in data analytics, but have a background in healthcare. Oh, Lori, you're typing your answer. Do you want to answer that live? Yeah, that's funny. I started typing, but, that, but then I thought, you know what, I can just answer that question. And the answer to your question is yes, it definitely is. Um, you certainly have a foundation and understanding healthcare, which is one aspect of the program. And then if you have that paralleled interest in data, data analytics, informatics, artificial intelligence, it may be a really great fit for you. Awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you for submitting that question just in time before we close. So thank you again um, to all of you who have taken the time this afternoon to um, hear more about the DHDA program and the updates that we have. Um, thank you, everyone.